Hi, this is Jamie Davis, the Pod Medic, back with another episode of our MedicCast TV weekly commentary. These short segments containing some comments, some suggestions and ideas, tricks and tips for the EMS professionals and other healthcare providers out there in the field taking care of patients. And we'll be talking about a variety of things, including product updates, information on new tools that I think might be available and interesting for you to check out, and of course, suggestions for you to improve the way you care for your patients in your community. This week, I wanted to come out and talk to you a little bit about something that has to do with pediatric patient care. <gasps> pediatric patient care? Oh no! What am I know, we don't get too many pediatric patients in most EMS services, and so we tend to like treat the little devils as some kind of uh, creature to be worried and scared of. Uh, but one of the things that we can do to improve our pediatric care is to actually provide additional resources and services for the parents. How often do you get called to just check out a kid who's uh, been sick, and do they need to go to the hospital? Maybe, maybe not. But um, the parents, you know, have been worried about them for one reason or another. And, you know, parents, especially new parents, you know, there's no manual that comes with the kids. It's not like, you know, your new car. You can go out and open the glove box and pull out the manual and find out why that light's blinking on the dashboard. Uh, you don't know why the kid's crying. You don't know why uh, they're upset or my, why they've uh, had an upset stomach or their appetite's off. So there's things we can do. But wait a minute, you're not a professional pediatrician or a pediatric nurse or maybe even a specialized paramedic with pediatric critical care training. What do I mean that I'm going to ask you to do? Well, one of the things you can do is to teach parents every time you go and deal with pediatric patients, talk to parents about safe measuring of pediatric medications. A couple weeks ago on the MedicCast and on the nursing show, I had Lisa Booz on from the Maryland Poison Center talking about the update on information about the banning of pediatric cough and cold medications for children under the age of four. Why do they do this? Because parents were inadvertently overdosing their children because they didn't accurately measure doses. And so these kids were getting overdoses of medications, a lot of times con containing something like acetaminophen or other medications that are very hard on certain body systems like the liver. And uh, patients were getting very ill or dying because of inadvertent overdoses because parents look at the bait box and say teaspoon and they open up their kitchen drawer and they pull out the thing they used to eat ice cream. Well, is that a teaspoon? Well, it's called a teaspoon, but it's not the measurement teaspoon. Now, most places are using milliliters now, uh, but they will, they will also say uh, five milliliters or one teaspoon. Uh, what does that mean? Well, here's what you can do. Go to your local pharmacy. You can get these little spoons. You've seen these before, especially if you're a parent. Uh, you can get these for like 99 cents. You may even be able to get your local pharmacy to go ahead and donate a few for each unit. Keep them in your peds bag, keep them with you at all times, and uh, pull them out of a little Ziploc so they can stay clean, and uh, you'll go ahead and give them to the parents and say, you know, this is what you should use to measure. So if you're gonna give your kids some Tylenol, we're gonna leave, maybe you'll need us to come back later, but in the meantime, I want you to have this, and the measurements are right here. You want to pour it in carefully, hold it upright, and read the lines. Very simple, very easy to use, and just an extra little thing you can carry with you. Again, 99 cents a piece in most places, you probably could get them donated from local pharmacies to uh, put on your units and uh, you can go ahead and uh, have these available. Simple little trick and it's just something that you should just always be aware of. Let's avoid those inadvertent poisoning calls for medications for children of all ages by making sure that parents and caregivers whether they be babysitters, grandparents, or whoever, have the appropriate tools and know how to use them to safely dose those children. I'm Jamie Davis, the Pod Medic. I'll be back again with other segments every Friday for the coming few months here of the MedicCast TV Weekly Commentary. If you'd like to send me a comment or suggestion, you can, of course, comment on any of the links for this episode, or go ahead and shoot me an email to podmedic at mac.com. Perhaps there's a topic you'd like me to talk about or a tip you'd like me to share on a future episode. In the meantime, I do want to remind you to head over and check out MedicCast.tv for these video episodes and, of course, the long video episodes of the weekly MedicCast podcast you'll find over there as well. And again, that's MedicCast.tv. I'm Jamie Davis, the Pod Medic. Until next time, don't forget, scene safety, BSI. <laughs>